before I tell you about this, uh, my mother only told me this story once. And I remember it was, um, I think we were home, I was home from school one day, it was snow or something like that. And uh, for some reason, you know, she just told me, sat me down and told me what happened, that, you know, okay. And that, you know, you can only get information the rest of her life. What was common amongst those of us in our family and other families who came from there, uh, we would talk about the old country, and it was mostly to make a contrast. As you probably know, you study Jewish history, uh, during the Civil War, what, in what became the Soviet Union, um, <clears throat> there was uh, numerous armies. You know, of course, you had the Red Army and the Bolsheviks, and then you had the White Army. <laughs> but even within the White Army, you had uh, different segments, and especially in what is now called Ukraine today. During the Civil War, the Jews, like, <laughs> like my, call it my brothers, the Armenians, are caught in the middle and literally, and excuse my language, catch hell. Okay, which is, it was a historical position for us. And so um, <clears throat> there was battles between the Red, Red Army, Red Guards, and there was a, a section of uh, a Pet Lura who was the military leader in the Ukraine, a fascist. And he had on them, there was another battalion called the Gaidamax, and led by, uh, they had, I forget, it's that Turkish title, uh, uh, Atman, not he was an Atman. Yes, it's, it's like Tur it's Turkish, by the way. So, um, in in 1919, on the the weekend of Purim, um, uh, the Gaidamax had planned a um, a pogrom, mostly in Paskur because there were more Jews, and there was another town that, as a matter of fact, is a an active Landmannschaft here in the United States, Feldstein smaller village, not a town like Puskurov, but that they were hit too. Uh, this was, uh, my mother told me that uh, a Cossack officer had come to my uh, grandfather's house, the air house, and uh, warned them of what was going about to come. So, and, and so they boarded up their apartment and they hid inside of a room downstairs for the course, and when this happened, uh, well, Shabbos you know, in Purim and then the next day. It was about something on the approximately 2,000 Jews died. This is before the Germans with their technology of killing, you know. It's just guns and knives, you know. So, um, you know, she said that she could hear screaming and all that, but she was very scared. She was like 12 years old at the time. And I heard her brother and my grandfather and grandmother. Now, after following, uh, the pogrom, you know, the, there was no other question to get out of here and somehow get joined the family in the United States. And I'll tell you a humorous anecdote about my mom. Uh, first time I went to Europe, I mean, first of all, she just flipped out, uh, saying I was going to Europe. What do you want to go there for? It's old buildings, you know, people standing in line, the pressure, and blah, blah. And um, you have to remember, I'll tell you about my mother's journey, why she became <laughs> a certain attitude towards travel. You know, resorts like Hawaii, Florida, fine. You know, at least you get the rest there. You know, you're not, no one's coming to uh, threaten your life because you're Jewish. <laughs>